Today we're going to learn how to achieve this clothing transformation effect we see here, all within After Effects, and surprisingly, just a few simple steps while learning some tips and tricks along the way. I'm Austin Smith, and that's my name, so let's get going. So in After Effects, I have my footage here on the bottom layer, and on the top layer, I have this face paint effect, but we aren't discussing that today. So I'll first start by duplicating the main footage layer and trimming off the ends where I don't need the effect. Now, my main footage layer here is a pre-comp, meaning if I double click it, we can see it has a few clips stitched together within it. So what I can do here is add an adjustment layer and with the Lumetri color effect, make the footage have more contrast. So this is just a little trick for After Effects to read the footage better when using the Rotobrush Brush tool. So back in the main comp, I wanna make sure the playback quality is on full and then right mouse click on the main footage, select open, open layer. Then I can go ahead and grab the Rotobrush Brush tool, make my selection and play through. Once that's done, I can hit freeze to render it in and then I can jump into the footage pre-comp and turn off that adjustment layer so that we can have our colors back to normal. So if I solo off this layer, we can see that the shirt is now cut from the shot. Well, everything else is cut from the shot, I should say. And you can also see how the roto isn't perfect around the sleeve area, which is fine because, well, we really just need it to be around the neck and chest area. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create a circle shape here, having it be black for now, and then I'll just keyframe the scale so it can grow over time. And before before I go further, let me go ahead and organize my timeline as well. I'll name my layers properly and then label the ones that we're working with the color orange. Also naming this one black growth just sounds odd. I realize that, but anyways, I'll go ahead and keep the name and track mat the black growth to the shirt mat. And now we have our growing black shape appearing only on the shirt. I can keyframe the position of the black shape throughout the shot as well to make it more detailed, along with adjusting the scale frame by frame. Now these adjustments can be and will be altered little by little as I go on adding more effects. I won't be showing every single one of those adjustments, but I just want that to be known, with the goal of just maintaining the illusion that the growth is coming out from the neck collar and not just a random black circle on the screen. So if I zoom in here though, you can see that the edges of our shirt are still shown slightly. So to fix that, I can go to the Roto Brush settings, bring the feather up to 24 and the shift edge to 25. Now this could differ with whatever effect you're doing, but that's what I'm using for this. I'll also set the black shapes blending mode to multiply and I can adjust the color to get a style that I want. For now, I'll just stick with this light gray. Next, I'll create a new solid, naming it edge texture, label it orange and apply turbulent noise effect. I'll leave that there for now, turning its visibility off and jumping back to the black growth, I'll apply turbulent displacement to it, which gives us this cool effect, which honestly, you could probably play around with this and perhaps get an effect that you like with these controls alone. But for me, I'm going to first just focus on the evolution. I want to give this control an expression, which I can do by holding Alt or Option on my keyboard and selecting the stopwatch here. And the timeline, I'll type time asterisk 100, which will just have the evolution amount increase over time. Now, the lower the number, the slower the increase over time, the bigger the number, the faster the increase over time. Lastly, I'll set the turbulence amount to 200 and its size to 10. Now going back to the edge texture, I'll bring the contrast way up and the brightness down. I can then set the fractal type to dynamic progressive and then set the same expression as I did before on this one's evolution as well. Except here, I'll set the number to 250 and then I'll turn off the layer again. And the black growth layer, I'll apply a displacement map and make the layer edge texture and make sure that it's reading the layer's effects. I'll make these luminance and bring up the displacement to 24. Next, I'll apply CC vector blur, having the effect map be connected to the edge texture and again, making sure it's reading the effects and set the amount to 17. Now applying the vector blur will help give this effect more of the wispiness to the growth that we see in the music video. Lastly, I'll add some Gaussian blur to soften out the edges, having our growth now be complete. But to achieve even a more detailed look, I'll go ahead and duplicate the growth layer, having one be named gray and the other named black, and then adjust the scale of the black one so its growth is just slightly behind the gray one. I'll also change its color so it's far darker. Now selecting the edge texture, I'll duplicate that layer as well and then connect our displacement map and our vector blur from our black growth layer to the new edge texture, and then adjust the edge texture's expression. So a little tip here is with the layer selected, if I hit U twice on the keyboard, the expression will automatically show up. And I want to change this from 250 to 200. But the last thing I'll do is just make final adjustments to the growth's positions and scale through the shot, add a color grade, and that leaves us with this. Now, if you want to see me edit this to this, then go ahead and check out this video here. If you don't, I'm glad you made it this far with this one. 